Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. We've got the OnePlus 5 obviously still in-house working towards that full review, but we also know that a number of you ordered this guy right away, and you probably have orders arriving, well, as early as this Friday. So for those of you who do have one on the way, we want to dive in like we do with all of the major important flagship phones and give you the first 10 things to do with your OnePlus 5. So the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is figure out a button setup. So for those new to OnePlus phones, you do have a couple of options for your buttons. You can go on screen navigation buttons like I've done, or you can go with the capacitive buttons that they have down here at the bottom. I'm a huge fan of on screen. So obviously I made that choice, but if we dive into settings, there is an option here for buttons. And so we tap that and this is where you get to decide what you want. If you want on screen or not. And out of the box, they actually come off. And when you go with the non on screen buttons, you do have um, these two little dots each to the left and right of your fingerprint reader. So fingerprint reader obviously gets you back home and those two dots will uh, get you back and your app switcher. And they don't necessarily say that they are really just dots. Again, I'm an on screen guy, so I'm going to go ahead and check that. But one thing you can also do is say leave your home button always on so i'm using on-screen buttons but i also have the fingerprint reader reader enabled as a home button so you can really kind of customize your setup to how you might like it i also have some other buttons in here so press camera twice to launch the sh or launch the camera sorry press press button over here the power button launch the camera um, and then you can also set up some other shortcuts so if you go with the capacitive style and that home button um, or you leave that home button active, you'll see here there are some additional options um, to give you some extra settings. So for example, I have set the home button, double tap twice turns the screen off. And then I also have long press that home button launches Google Assistant. Of course, I can long press the, the virtual or um, on-screen nav button as well, but you can customize these buttons to do additional things. So the, the button setup here, while it's not necessarily the biggest deal on a lot of phones, it is on the OnePlus 5. All right, so the next thing I would say is set up your your alert slider. So the OnePlus phones like the iPhone have an alert slider and you can use this slider rather than using your volume key to adjust your, your silence or do not disturb modes. You can just flip this volume or alert slider up down into whatever you want. So all the way up starts out as silent in the middle is do not disturb and then down one more is uh, full ring. Um, and so you can actually tweak this stuff and there is an option in settings here above that buttons option called alert slider and you tap that. And as you go in here, there are some specific options you can set. So when you want it in silent mode, which is all the way up, you can decide if you still want media to have volume or muted or if you want vibrations at all. And then if you want alarms to ring or not, um, same thing goes for do not disturb. You'll find some additional stuff in here. Um, repeat callers can get through. For example, you can tell it if you want the notification light to still pulse, um, reminders to come through in events and alarms and all that stuff. And you can set up your favorite contacts are who are allowed to sort of break through that. And then if you go into ring, this is just, well, there's one option. If you also want it to vibrate while your phone's ringing. So anyway, you do have an alert slider and it is unique to the one plus five on Android. So you may as well set that thing up. The next thing we'll then take a look at is gestures on your phone. So we're still in this whole customization section here. So we'll tap on gestures. So gestures are the types of things you can do that are shortcuts to get you into, you know, favorite apps, camera, take screenshots, uh, mute your phone, things like that. So rather than reaching for buttons and that sort of thing, you can do other little shortcuts. So for example, flip to mute just means if you have an incoming call and you can't hit a button to silence it, you can just flip your phone over, set it down, and that will... Um, silence it. Three finger screenshots, a cool one. I think you just basically swipe down on your screen with three fingers and it'll take a screenshot of whatever you have up rather than fumbling over power and volume down. You can just swipe on there. Double tap to wake is an important one, I think, or it's one you'll probably use often. And that just means when your phone is in this state, you can double tap and it will wake up your phone. Um, so some other ones in here you may want to do are your music controls where you can draw with two fingers to play or pause music. Um, I don't necessarily use that often but those are one of the controls you can do and then there's the letter o v s m and w you can draw on the lock screen that will then launch things so a lot of people have o i think be say the camera shortcut or something like that so how that would work then is if i'm on the lock screen and i draw an o that should then launch the camera and you can see there 
it does. So anyway, those gestures are important um, because they do just kind of let you get into things without doing much work. All right, so the next thing again, still in customization, we'll look at the status bar. So status bar is this guy up here where your Wi-Fi icons and things like that are. So they give you some customization in here. You can change the style of how your battery meter shows, whether you hide it fully, just go with the standard bar or the circle. I'm a big circle guy, so we went circle. You can also decide if you want your battery percentage to show up there or not. Um, you can display network speed. So depending on what you're doing, you can always see if there's data coming in and out of your phone. Um, you can adjust time and then icons. This allows you to just sort of turn off stuff. So for example, I unchecked the box for NFC because I don't really like the NFC icon and I definitely don't need it always on up there. Um, but so you can hide icons or make some of them come back, um, that sort of thing. All right, so let's dive into our notification panel. So this area up here, your notification quick settings area, it's just good to get this figured out and tweak to your liking right away. So swipe down twice, hit the little pencil button and you can edit this. Um, and in order to edit it and move things around, you just grab one and then you kind of drag it to wherever you want. You guys have seen this a hundred times, but again, it's here and it's, it's sort of just a standard Android feature now. Uh, but you'll find some additional shortcuts like the gaming mode that, uh, the gaming do not disturb mode that OnePlus plus and there is actually a shortcut for that or your cast button or your VPN button or data saver. Um, so customize those, get those right. Um, I use them so often that it's one of the first things I certainly do every time I, uh, I get a new phone. And the big thing is those first five, you can see up top there. And those, the big thing about those is the first swipe the first swipe down gets you those first five. So they're the first five that show up in here. So you may as well uh, customize those. All right, so talking about security for a second, we do have a fingerprint reader once again on this phone. You should use it. And I tell you this every time we do one of those videos, um, but you should use a fingerprint reader. It secures your device. And uh, if someone were to lose it, uh, I'm sorry, if you were to lose your phone and someone were to pick it up, they can't get through it because it's secured that way. And then that also means you have a pin or pattern or some other lock on there as well. But for you, it's really easy to just put your finger on there and unlock your phone. And again, it's secure, but it's really convenient for you to uh, unlock it. So anyway, it's in settings, security and fingerprint manager, uh, and security and fingerprints, and you just, you walk through it. And when you first set up your device, you will probably walk through this and you may as well do it at that time. Um, so I set up a pattern for mine, and then I also set up four fingers both thumbs, both index fingers. Since when I'm holding the phone, it's really easy to use my thumb in order to uh, unlock my phone. But if the phone is lying on a desk, it's also really easy then to just use index fingers. So those are the, the four I always set up. Obviously, um, you can go with whatever your approach is there. All right, let's jump back home. So the launcher on OnePlus phones is actually pretty decent now. It's it's certainly certainly a take on Google's Pixel launcher by now. You know, you can see with the uh, different shaded um, dock down here that swipes up in your app. So it's kind of like the Pixel launcher, and you can swipe over. And there's a new shelf that well, it's not new, but the shelf is over there. Um, it's not Google now, but it is. One plus a shelf that has some useful stuff. But anyway, you should set this up. And this is actually a launcher I like if you don't want to jump in and try to download um, Nova or something like that. I think you'll actually like this one. And because this is 7.1.1, you do have launcher shortcuts built in. Um, but you can tweak some of this stuff. So just long press on it and tap on settings. And you can turn that shelf on or off depending on whether or not you find that useful. There's actually a shortcut that allows you to just swipe down wherever to get into your notification shade, which is obviously useful. You can turn those app shortcuts off if you don't want those. And then you can actually go in and choose a new icon pack or something like that if you want to. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. Um, and again, that was just a long press. And that also allows you to move things around and delete home screens and change your wallpaper and all of that stuff. So, all right, so if we dive back into settings here, I did want to point out that you can adjust or change themes. And actually, we're just going to look at a couple of display features. So in display, you do have a bunch of stuff you should probably take a look at in here. Number one, adaptive brightness will try to adjust the brightness of your phone at all times. Um, you can check out your sleep mode. Mine is always pretty high because I tend to like to film my phone and not have it shut off. Um, but night mode is another is another feature that's on here. And night mode is one of those things where it turns everything sort of a an orangish color, an amber color in order to uh, ease strain on your eyes at night. So I have mine scheduled to come on, but there's a manual setting there as well. And you can see how it slowly just gets more orange and more orange. And you can adjust the strength of that as well. Uh, another thing they added in this, these display settings is a reading mode. So a reading mode, if you're, if you read, say a bunch of books or something like that on your device, you can actually adjust to a reading mode and the, the device will slowly do this, but it kind of just goes into a black and white, um, a black and white mode. And so 
We'll turn that back on and get color back. But reading mode, that's where you'll find that as well. There's a screen calibration section in here if you want to go sRGB mode. You can custom color, change it from cold to warm, however you want it down there, or just go with the default, which I've kind of been okay with at this point. Um, but this is this display area, there's a whole bunch of settings right up top here you're probably gonna wanna play with. What I wanted to show you though is there is a theme section here. So you do have a default theme, which is this guy, which has the sort of black up top here and the lighter settings, but there is actually a full light theme, which turns this area up here light, or there's a dark theme, which turns this area here darker and then you can actually adjust um, an accent color if you choose any of those other two themes um, just something to be aware of and then finally in this section um, ambient display and lift up display are two options you may want to may want to play with ambient display when you get notifications that roll in on your lock screen it sort of lights up your lock screen um, it shows you they have a notification there and lift to display is if your phone's lying down you lift it up it sort of wakes up and shows you if you have anything missing so Anyways, uh, the next thing and probably the most important is launching your camera. So the quickest way to do it on this phone is, well, if you have a lock screen gesture set up, you could draw, say, a circle or a V or whatever. Um, but you can always, from anywhere, double tap on that power button and then we'll get into your camera. And then you can snap all the photos you want. Um, so that's just one of those things to keep in mind at all times. The quickest way to get into your camera is just a double tap on that button. It loads it up. Um, from within the camera, I don't want to dive too deeply into here, but to get into your portrait mode, which activates that whole bokeh fun, you uh, actually just from the main camera, just swipe over this way. And it would be this dot down here on the furthest right. Um, if you want to get into video, you just swipe all the way over to the left and that gets you into video. Um, if you want to adjust anything, like say play with the zoom, since we do have that dual camera set up, um, there is a zoom button right here. And so right now it's at one time zoom. If I tap it again, it goes into two time. Um, I can also tap it and drag, and then I can get really close to stuff. And you can go all the way up to an eight time zoom. Um, take pictures, video, whatever you want there. Um, but that's sort of how that works. So anyway, that's how you get into the camera quickly. And then finally, the other, the last of the 10 things I would say is don't forget about Google Assistant. So you can set up Google Assistant and a long press on home gets you into Google Assistant. Google Assistant obviously is your little personal assistant on your Android phone that allows you to pull up information, set reminders, get the weather, look things up. Um, that sort of thing. So Google Assistant, long press on that on home and it gets you into there. And remember, you can now type in your Google Assistant now as well, just by tapping this little keyboard over here. So you can type things out. You don't have to talk to Google Assistant at all the time. So anyway, first 10 things you should do with your OnePlus 5. We've got more coming. Enjoy life. Peace.